Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are jumping back on our 1974 Volkswagen Subaru conversion project. Today we're going to be doing some more patch panels for some spots that are rusted through. Now a few episodes ago we did some patch panels, but just our bigger ones are more of an immediate need. Um, over our fuel sender and underneath our clutch foot were really bad spots. We had those taken care of, cut them out, made a cardboard template, and tacked those in. Now last episode we had to cut that patch panel out above our fuel sender to put a new fuel sender in it. The original one that was in it was no good. If you didn't see that episode, make sure you guys check it out. I'll put a link down in the description for that one as well. So you can check that and get up to date with the project of where we're at. So we're going to chop that one back out. We're going to make a new one. Um, there's a couple small holes back behind the driver's seat. Um, we're going to need to fix those as well. Just looks like some water damage and made a little holes in it. Maybe we'll be able to tack some weld in there and plug some of them without having to cut a big patch out. And we also have another one right underneath our driver's seat. When you look straight down, it's there on the bottom. It looks like someone tried to repair it in the past bunch of stuff coming out the bottom is not very good. So we gotta get that cut out and patched as well. So I think we're gonna work front to back. We're gonna make sure we're all set to go in the very front cabin area, then go behind the seat and then finally finish with that fuel sender cover. These aren't gonna be super perfect patches, you know, with all the ribs and the patterns of the floor. And it's not gonna be that serious. It's more just to plug the holes. That way we can have more of a watertight seal. We'll primer them, you know, do a rubberized undercoating on all those pieces wherever we can to make sure they don't rust in the future, seal them up, get them all taken care of. So first things first, let's uh, get to the front here. Let's cut out that bad spot underneath our driver's seat. I'll show you what it looks like now. We'll start cutting it out, make some templates, start welding in some patches. So here's one of our original patches. That's that one under our clutch foot that we did a few episodes ago, but you see there's still another one here. Looks like some of the old sound material coating. I don't know what this is. It's still on there. So we need to cut this out and see it's full kind of caves down into this hole as well. So we need to do our best to cut nice and close here to try and not get into this joint. Then we'll go to where this little crack is up over and then back through, try and make a patch for this. Um, that's going to be our biggest spot. Our next spot's going to be back here. You can see these little pinholes back there, especially over here as well. There's a couple over there, so I need to do those as well. And then that monstrosity of a temporary hold needs to come out as well. So we're gonna break out our marker and our grinder, and we're gonna mark out where we wanna cut this. Again, being careful here. So we're gonna cut this out, grab our ear and eye protection, and chop this out. So here's that part that we cut out and you can see just how concave it is and all of that horribleness. Looks like some sort of seam sealer. There's just stuff down in there. I don't know what that is, but uh, you can see that sound deadening material, original stuff that's on there, that black goo. Ooh, it's a little warm, but glad we cut that out because we are going to come back in here to the nice hole we made. So it'll be a nice, easy square patch. We'll have to come across with our flat bisque or uh, something and get all that gunk away from there so we can weld properly. But looks like there's a little bit that hung around, but we'll be able to cut into that. So we're gonna make a nice square template and clean this area up and we'll be able to weld that in. And then we'll be able to put some primer on all this to protect it from rusting in the future. We've taken our wire wheel attached to our grinder and that really made quick work of this old rubber coating. See, it took it off really well, but it did expose another little fracture crack here and another small spots here. So when we go to weld this patch in, it's gonna get a little dicey right in here and over here and over here. So we got a little bit more to fill in on our original patch, but we're gonna see if we can uh, just fill that. If that's the case, we'll just keep, you know, knocking it out. And if it uh, ends up becoming too much of a patch, then or too much of an area, we can make a patch for it. So we're just going to go a little at a time. We're going to start off with this, that, fill in that, do that, 
and then uh, we'll attach, attack the hard side um, because of this, this joint here as well. So let's start with the easy stuff and then uh, get our confidence up because we're not good to begin with. And we'll see what we can get from here and here and, you know, make it come together. So we've got that patch installed. There's still a couple little tiny holes, but uh, I'm gonna put some seam sealer on here. Be able to plug in, plug up some of those little rust holes as well. That big crack here on the bottom, we got that filled in. It's not the most beautiful thing, but this is all gonna get covered up, you know, with padding and sound deadening and all that stuff anyway. So uh, the seam sealer will take care of the little tiny pinholes. I mean, that is way better than you know, this that we started with. So I'll gladly take little tiny pinholes. I need some seam sealer over leaving that in there. So first patch is done. I think the next place we go is back here behind the driver's seat. Kind of see some holes there. It's a little crunchy. Um, so we're gonna come back here with a hammer and see what we can poke out, maybe even with a screwdriver and see what comes out of that. Uh, maybe we can do some one big patch to take care of all of it at once and be done with it or some little small spots um, we've also got those little holes right over there to take care of as well it looks pretty thin so i don't think we're gonna be able to fill that with the weld we're gonna have to probably do another big square patch for that one we're gonna rinse and repeat do the same thing with these and this as we just did up front that way we can start you know sealing this thing up but as soon as we get these patches installed, uh, we're going to, I think we're gonna be able to start putting the sound deadening material in. They've got big rolls of it. So we're gonna put it uh, you know, in the doors and in the panels and these big square panels, especially the sliding door on the floor, uh, on the ceiling. So it doesn't sound like that. Uh, and start sealing this thing off. I just wanna make sure all these rust holes are fixed first before we put the sound deadening on top of it because I don't want it to trap in that moisture. So we're just gonna move on to the next ones, grab our work light slowly start working our way around with the welder and patch them up again not beautiful but it's a lot better than the holes they are let's get to work gets hot welding all those little tacks over and over again again they're not turning out super beautiful welds i am no pro by any means but we're gonna end up sealing them up anyway um, with some seam sealer flex seal kind of stuff um, and that should fill up all the little gaps that i missed but it's way better than that awful rust cluster that we had before so we still got one more behind the driver's seat i saw um, kind of a smaller area we have one behind the passenger seat and then our fuel filler fuel filler 
our fuel sender, can you tell I'm delusional from all the welding and hunched over? Yeah, I'm a little loopy, but our fuel sender patch uh, is will be the last stop. After that, we should have all the holes patched that are annoying and take forever because it's like 10 seconds for you guys, but it's been taking me probably two hours for those two patches and it's nuts. All the measuring and cutting and recutting and fitting and tacking and forever. So I'm not gonna record these last three. You guys get the general idea. I'm gonna bring you guys back when we have it all together. Hopefully it's today, the same day, but uh, you know, without recording, it should save me some time. And I'll bring you guys back when we have those all in there. We're gonna spray them down with some primer so they don't rust. So two down, three to go. Almost halfway. The next day. All right, so yesterday we were able to finish up doing those patches and uh, this is kind of what we came up with is we were able to fill in some of the small holes here with weld which was nice a lot of good metal was still here so we didn't have to cut out huge patches but this corner got pretty hairy pretty quick so we did that first patch that you guys saw and then we ended up going this way where there's a couple more holes here and that's what this is this is the original one up there but this is what ended up being that one is I just kept poking and poking and it kept getting deeper and deeper and all along that back wall there all along here it was just falling apart along that back edge so uh, I ended up having to cut out all that because there was no way I was going to try and weld around all that mess and it's super super thin so I didn't want to risk any of that and you can already see it's pitted really bad it looks like someone just put some coating over top of it or it was the original coating that just retained the moisture Either way, that corner was really toast, so we took just a flat panel, um, a relief cut up in the corner, and just kind of hammered it into place along with these grooves here. It is just roughly tack welded in, um, so that was one big patch there, this one already. And then uh, one patch we did have to do uh, for here, it was just a lot of thin stuff again, so we had to get rid of that. And then on the back with our fuel sender, what I did here is, again, not pretty, don't approve of this method. But we took some old vacuum hose um, and made some rubber edges around it. We plug welded the two backs and then some screws. So if we need to access this in the future, we can easily just pop this out and put it back in. Uh, and that should take care of that. Um, it's it's going to hold. I mean, it's going to do the job. And I want easy access in the future. If we ever have to get into it again, we, we can. Um, but all of those are taken care of. And of course... R1 and the front driver is taken care of as well. You can see some daylight coming through there, but we're going to put a coating on that. So the next thing is we're going to need to blow this out, get all the weld dust and all the grinder dust out of this thing, blow it out. What I'd really like to do is probably take the hose and hose it out as well to really get all of that out of it. And what I want to do is go to the store. We're going to pick up some like flex seal type stuff. Um, seen some good reviews as far as sealing cracks and things like that um, for that. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to get like a quart jug of it. And then we're also going to get the spray can to get into the corners. We're going to go up about six inches. Um, I guess I can show you guys here. We're going to go up about six inches into it. So uh, we're going to spray into the corners and go up, you know, about that high all the way around um, just to seal the edge. And that'll really fill in a lot of these little gaps that were left from the welder. Um, it'll seal it all in and then in the middle we'll actually just take a, a paintbrush and a roller and just actually roll it on in here in the middle and that should take care of sealing this out of all of the um, any potential moisture that could get in here will be on top not stuck underneath so we're going to fill in all these spots with the, the kind of flex seal stuff and that will take care of it um, we're going to go all the way up all the way back around the edge as well we won't seal in that of course or that we'll just go around it but uh, seal this all in nice good edge, um, especially with us uh, going camping in the future. We're gonna be outside a lot, the door's gonna be open a lot, humidity in the air, things like that. So we wanna wanna make sure that none of that is going to affect uh, any future rust. So let's clean this thing out, set you guys up, spray this out, get it all nice and clean, any leftover pieces and parts. You need to make sure that those are taken out as well. Clean it up, let it dry out, probably take my leaf blower to it, help, help uh, move some of that water out and let the sun do the rest uh, while we go to the store. So let's get to cleaning.
hours later. All right, so we've got it all cleaned out and dry and the sun has been working wonders and we had our massive fan in here drying it out and we swept out everything and did it once over one more time and it's all clean. So what we're gonna be using is the actual Flex Seal stuff. I've never used it before, but it says it's for RVs, campers, trailers, scudders. So, I mean, we're gonna try it. Um, we are using white just in case we um, go a little too tall. It'll still match the white of the bus. So we're gonna do this around the edges um, just to really get into those corners and into those kind of tight spots. And then we are going to, um, we actually have a, a quart size thing of it as well to help seal um, this big flat area in the middle and around the, the back hatch there. So we're going to shake this up real good and we're going to start spraying it and see how it looks. I think it's going to look fantastic when it uh, is all the same color. It will really look more complete. So let's keep shaking and let's start spraying. So we laid the spray around the edges to really get down in those cracks and crevices. Some of the holes didn't get completely filled, but they were pretty close. So I think when we start rolling on the actual thick stuff um, across the middle, we're gonna start on the way back and work our way towards you. Um, we'll be able to fill in those gaps with a little bit more of a concentrate in there. Um, so all we're gonna do is start spreading this on and start making it look like new for the first time in who knows how long. First layer is in, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Pretty even. Got some little patches to do here and there where the brush didn't quite get down in there along that border as well. Might go grab another spray can just to uh, hit in the gaps and everything like that where it's kind of tough to get the roller in. But it looks way better just with that first initial layer. Um, what I want to do is go all the way up and around this way, and then up the tunnel as well and then finish up here last, because there's already kind of a factory coating on here, but some of it definitely needs to be covered, like underneath my feet right there. Come around this way, help seal some of these metal to metal gaps here, um, and just all along the edge. But I think the next thing we're gonna do is come down this way, start at the bottom, work our way up, and then towards us in the back, and doing all this all over again. You guys gonna get the idea, we're just gonna do massive coats of this, letting it be on a little thin first, let it dry, and then we'll uh, come back through with whatever we have extra and do another layer if we can. Um, I just want this nice and thick to plug any sort of holes. You know, we've got a little hole over there. We got to plug that. Um, so looking good. We're just going to keep on applying this stuff. And then it's a nice hot 85 degree day. So it's going to dry pretty quick um, as it sits. So let's keep on brushing this stuff. And uh, I'll bring you guys back when we're done with all of our final coats. The next day. All right, so this is the third day working on this, but you can see we're finally sitting on the flex seal that we put on yesterday. Now this takes about 24 hours to 48 hours, depending on your climate, to dry. And we have this nice and dry. And it's actually, maybe I can show this. It's, it's like pure rubber on the bottom, which is fantastic for exactly what we want to do, for exactly for camping and keeping this waterproof. Um, 
and filled a lot of little tiny pinholes all over the place um, and took care of that. Even when you look from the bottom, you can see little white specks here and there where it filled in those little tiny gaps, which is exactly what we needed because sometimes we didn't even know we had um, just because they blended in so well with what the original uh, floor grayish stuff hid those spots really well. So it's all nice and plugged, which means that now we are moving on to sound dampening material. Now these are uh, sheets, uh, kind of thinner stuff um, that we got off Amazon. Um, it was 36 square feet um, for um, $70, I believe. It's like 50 mil, so it's a little bit thinner. I didn't want to get overly thick stuff, um, just because we are going to have this as well. And I'm also thinking about weight, because if it's way too heavy, we're going to start really weighing down this bus uh, more than we need to. So we're going to do like a before and after. Um, I'm going to put all the stuff on the ceiling first, then come down on the walls and in the gaps here um, between the panels. And then whatever we have left over, um, we'll go like over the wheel wells, um, and then go to like underneath our, our feet in the front. That's another noise spot where the where the wheels are um, to really dampen that as well underneath the seats. Um, but priority is ceiling and walls, and then we'll move to floor sections to really get that road noise down. So let's see what this sounds like um, before we put it all in. I did one test sheet up in the ceiling. Uh, worked great, stuck right away. So we're gonna do like a sound of what it sounds like before, and we're gonna do a bef an after um, when we install it all, and I'll time lapse all that for you guys. You can see it all going in um, as we just roll it on with a simple little roller. So let's see what it's like before. So this is our before test. Oh, that's so bad. Actually sounds pretty solid with the with the flex seal on there. See kind of rattly, but you can see where we've already done one patch. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna install all of it in here, and we'll do another sound test in these same spots to see how much of a difference it makes. successfully made a mess but you can see we've got a lot of it up so what we've done in here is we've gone the whole ceiling all the way across and you see around the joints I got it nice and tight to follow the seams um, and then around and all the way over that's why I left a gap so it fully encapsulates those crossbars all the way across here same thing here you can see there's a little bit of a crack where I stressed it a little too close but it's all in there and then we came across here, right above the wheel wells, uh, kind of patched a bunch together, kind of dispersing it a little evenly. And then here on the back wall, especially. Now, I didn't uh, make these up side by side. Again, just trying to conserve some of what we have. Um, I did it on this side as well. And we also did it in the doors uh, here. So, all we've done is just the back here. We haven't even touched the front besides the roof. And just like that, 36 square feet is gone. For some reason, I thought that was gonna low, go a lot farther than it did. But if you think about it, it's only a six foot by six foot square, and that's 36 square feet. So it goes pretty quick, especially with the big wide flat panels that the bus has. Um, but we can do our test to see how well. So before, it was that kind of tin sound. So now we're gonna try the roof. Oh yeah, way more solid on the doors much better. And then uh, I think the back was the worst where it really had the rattle. Oh, what a 
absolute difference. Now there's a little bit of a rattle coming from those panels there. I haven't gotten to those yet, obviously, but this is way better and you're still healing the rattle that is not covered, but I mean, it's pretty solid in here. So that is huge improvement. I'm gonna call that a huge, oh, if I can sit down here. Whew. I'm gonna call that a huge win. Um, we're definitely gonna need to order probably another 36 square foot box. Um, luckily it's pretty affordable, 36 square feet was $70. So, um, and look how far it went. Um, and this is just kind of patching, this isn't side by side. So if you're gonna do this and you wanna go side by side the whole time, I mean, you're gonna need probably four boxes to be completely honest, to do the bottom, the top, all the walls, everything like that. We haven't even done the driver and passenger door yet. Um, and we haven't done the front um, of the bus yet, you know, with the front that faces the, the street um, below the dash. We haven't done that. None of the floor is done. I mean, we still need to do our wheel wells. You see how tin those are. We have to do the back door um, in between all that. And, uh, you know, there's, I'd probably like to do up here as well where those seams are um, to get those covered with sound ending as well because where those joints are is where we're going to have the most rattle so that's why i really overlapped them where i could to really absorb that sound um, i'm probably not going to do the back of the chairs so i'll probably go up along here because you just all because the gas tank's behind there it's just hollow so i definitely want to cover all the floor in this stuff the floor i might do uh just kind of like we did the ceiling leave a little inch gap between it all and just do front to back and that alone is going to eat up probably a box on its own or pretty darn close um all i'm trying to do is block out the road noise um, i know there's going to be more stuff in here and that's going to eat up a lot of the noise as well but i don't know if the audio is picking it up but it already just sounds more encapsulated if that makes sense um, but it's just working out really really well and I'm, I'm really happy with this. We just got to order more and just rinse and repeat and find some more gaps and start filling up all these little areas that are left open. Um, like I said, I thought this was going to go farther, but if I did my math right, then I would have known and you should have ordered two. So we're just going to keep on trucking here. We're going to order another one. It probably won't be here till tomorrow. Um, and we're just going to do the same thing all over again. But I'm happy with it. it looks really, really good. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this episode. We have done quite a lot over these past couple days. We've cut out some patches. We welded in some patches. We did this flex seal coating, which I'm really happy with. I'm actually super satisfied. I highly recommend doing that. And we have quite the mess to pick up, but uh, all the sound deadening as well. We're just gonna have to order another one and do that off camera. I mean, it's the same thing you guys just saw. It's just rinse and repeat, cut, fit, and stick it up there with that roller. Um, but we are making huge progress over these past few days. I'm just getting this thing ready to start messing around on the inside. I know a lot of people are excited to start working on the inside. Um, but we will, we'll get there. All right, just be patient. We're getting there. We got to do all the detail stuff like this before we can jump in it. But this is looking absolutely fantastic. I'm super thrilled with it. And I cannot wait to take this on the road after we get all this insulation in to see how much quieter it is just without all the rattle of, you know, just driving on the road. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing really, really helps the channel. Please make sure you do that. Also hit that notification bell that we guys always know when new content comes out. Uh, and stay up to date with that. We also do still have the drink sleeves available. Um, I'm doing a two for one right now. They're normally $5 each, but put two for one in your order and I'll throw in two of those um, for the price of one. So two for five bucks. We've also got a limited uh, quantity of Bus Depot stickers. So make sure you guys uh, order before those go away. I've only got about 15 or 20 of those stickers and I'll throw them into your order absolutely free along with a couple of my own stickers and some from Vix as well. Load you guys up on a sticker pack. You know, you can never go wrong with stickers. They go everywhere. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and until next time, we'll see you.